Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hops today, checking out another beer that I picked up on Beer Dome. So thanks a ton to Beer Dome for the beer. This was part of their most recent American release where they got a lot of dope shit. It's just insane the stuff that gets shipped over here at the moment. So this is another Toppling Goliath beer. We haven't really seen their bottles uh, of stouts and barrel aged stuff, but we've seen, oh wow, one, one. We saw the barrel aged turmoil fluffing under. But otherwise, it's mostly been cans, and this is a can of their double dry hopped King Sue. So they have Pseudo Sue, which is massively famous. I recently did, recently did double dry hopped Pseudo Sue, which was awesome. Uh, I like Peacherine Pseudo Sue a little bit more, but um, Pseudo Sue is their you know popular hazy pale ale that put them on the map. But it was much more hazy now than it did back in the day. But uh, I also tried King Sue. King Sue is the double IPA version of Pseudo Sue, which is also great as far as I remember. I, I think I gave you a original version of 95. So this is double dry hop. It features all citra hops. I uh, love the T-Rexes they are on the label. So it says that citra gives this one its bold flavors of mango, orange, and pineapple. It's double dry hopped and packed with even more flavor. And yes, this is definitely packed with hops because when I poured this out, I, I hope you could see on camera, this is the worst head retention and the worst, I don't I don't even want to call it a head on an IPA I, I think I've ever seen. Like um, it was just like these weird big bubbles. It just, it didn't look nice, but uh, the beer in question looks insanely saturated. There is uh, a lot of hops on this. You can see that already. This was packaged a little more than two months ago. And uh, yeah, it's just like this really, really bright yellow orangey note. Uh, color uh, you can you can just see like this looks thick so yeah and i could smell it when i popped it so let's see how it is cheers and let's take out the aroma wow, i really juicy sweet citrus fruit and loads of mango you can smell that this has got some substantial sweetness to it as well like the sweetness in the base, I'm guessing, is what's really also amplifying all that juice. It's so much juicy orange and mango to me. They say pineapple. I'm not really picking up on that right now. This is just like, it almost smells like a fucking smoothie. Holy shit, that's so intense on like mango lessy almost. Damn. That's uh that's a quite different note. So th what's interesting, I just had a Danish IPA prior to this and that was great, but you can feel that this is so much more rich and I'm guessing that it must be finishing gravity or, or the yeast because the, the baselining character on this seems such more, so much more decadent and rich. And I'm, I'm really thinking it might be sweetness, but let's see, let's try it. Cheers, it smells crazy. Thanks a ton to Beer Room for the beer. It's really big in the mouth. Whew. That's supercharged. Whew. Like you can feel polyphenols just like attack in your mouth. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, am I dying? Like, holy shit. That's intense. That's intense. Is that too intense? Like, it's funny, I'm also starting to get to too intense and too sweet. And like with a lot of beer, and I like I've talked about this a lot lately. Like some beers like, ah, oh, it's borderline too sweet, or it's but like because craft beer has always been about pushing, pushing, pushing. But you can also not at one point you will not be able to push anymore. Like you can't drink a glass of hops. And uh, this is uh, pushing. <laughs> Intense, rich body, sweet, um, but it's got so much fucking biting, polyphenol, drying hop flavor that uh, it does not seem too sweet when like the beer has gone down. And you can feel it, it's just like, it's just chewing in your neck. Like I, I'm almost 100% positive, I prefer single hot, dry hop <laughs> or whatever, just a regular King Su. To this like i'm sure if you try it for the first time you're gonna be like holy shit but like are you gonna be able to drink a can of this and feel okay <laughs> like holy shit there's so much hot particles in suspension like it's 
is borderline drinking dry hop. <laughs> like when you try a beer that's dry hopping on the tank, oh, wow, yeah, it's really fucking getting to me now. Like if, if you, when you're dry hopping a beer and you have a tank sample, smell and see how it's going, take a little sip, that's what I'm getting with this right now. Like, like, like you have this fuming polyphenol bite from hops. Uh, people call it hop burn, uh, which I guess it's what it basically is. But often it will mellow a bit, it will, you know, calm down. It's not going to be too much. I hear it's almost been too much. I, like, so this can, like, maybe, so I've, I've, lately I've, I've been debating rolling cans or not rolling cans. I feel like rolling the cans for hazies that people do and some breweries tell you to do depends on the amount of hops almost. Like, if this is dry hop to like 30 grams per liter, more maybe you shouldn't do it. it also depends on the process like i don't know exactly how the process is for this beer but you can feel there's a lot of hops in suspension but also when you look at the glass the beer sticks to the side and it slowly creeps down there must be a lot of residual sugar in this maybe i should try and do a gravity reading on it that would be interesting it's got some really cool flavors it's got like brightness, dankness, singiness, snappiness. It's got some mango. It's more like Monstera Deliciosa, these cool things it offers, like all these interesting notes. But then it's just like, ball of needles. It's just like attacking your palate. And you're like, oh, it's so dry in the mouth. Like, and bites. I, I t I'm taking baby sip right now. And it's a feel you get, I, like when you're dry hopping an IPA and you can feel that, oh, you're getting somewhere. Like, oh, this is intense, but I'm getting somewhere. That's what I'm feeling like right now. Burp just tastes like pure hops. I think this is kind of what Darwin sometimes has been talking about. This is not nice. I almost feel like I can't rate this. Like this is super hype beer, but I got just think it's too much. Like it's too much for its own good. So yeah, I'm not gonna rate it. I'm just gonna say, if you love high, crazy, intense saturation, this is a must try. If you love that like thick and palate intensity, fucking get this stuff. If you want more balance in your haze, just skip it. Uh, that's what I'm gonna say. So man, whew, intense stuff. So yeah. <laughs> Thanks and tons of beer dome for the beer as well. If you want to try it, I think you, if you're lucky, you might be able to get it there. Like when they get these things, you got to be quick if you want to try it. But yeah, I just, I don't feel comfortable rating it. I, it's rare that this happens, but I want to still spread this, share this video with you guys. Cause I'm sure a lot of you guys want to hear how it is. Cause it's not necessarily a cheap beer. But like the Brujos triple IPAs, there was so much more balance like this. This feels like drinking ops. This is crazy. So yeah, if you had a chance to try Double Dry Hop King Su from uh, Top Line Goliath, let me know what you thought of it. Thanks a ton to Beardome for the beer. Here is my honest thoughts, eh, as always. So if you guys had this one, let me know. As always, please comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, give the video a thumbs up, so join and ring the bell, future notification about videos. I'm gonna say cheers and thumbs up and see you guys in another beer review.